Welcome to BBC News Points West. Please listen to our special series, Ralph Allen. Here is a townhouse where he lived his early life and worked as a post office near here. This is in the centre of Bath near the Hunts Huntsman Hotel. Here we are at Rafa Allen Drive, where near Prior Park House, where Rafa Allen lived his early life. Wooden carts were pulled down this hill to the canal with full of bath stone. This is Pride Park House where Ralph Allen lived later in his life. Do you want to know that Ralph Allen didn't call this house Pride Park House? He called it the Palladium Mansion. Say it, Palladium is weird. As most of you know, Pride Park House is now a school. It's very beautiful. It was built in 1742 and John Wood the Elder designed it. Hello, and I've come to see Kirsten Elliott, um, a well-known Bath historian, to see what she knows about Ralph Allen. Here are some questions for you. <laughs> Good. How did he become so wealthy from quite poor beginning? Well, um, he starts off in the postal business, and um, his, his family were involved in the postal business. But he came here... Um, and it was during one of our sort of battles with the, with the Jacobites. And he um, went to uh, Field Marshal Wade and warned him that um, he discovered there was sort of a plot going on. Now, how did he discover that, of course? Well, he was a postmaster, and I think it's not too hard to work out. He was probably opening people's letters. Um, but that made, so that made him friends with the right people and he started to go know more and more influential people and he was a very good businessman, very shrewd, lots of ideas and so eventually he gets to the top. Okay. Um, how did Ralph Allen improve on the postal system? Well, the postal system was very inefficient in that um, posts used to go all the way into London and back again, um, even if two cities were um, not very far apart. Uh, I think there probably was a system of, of cross posts, but postmasters operated and you had to pay more to be on them. And Ralph Allen built up a whole system of cross posts so that you could send the letter directly from Bath to Wells, say. Um, and he licensed out these. He, got, he had to pay the government a lot of money to take over all the cross posts and to organise them, but that's basically how he did it. He saw that the postal service needed to be much more coherent instead of, you know, this main system of going in and out of London or these odd little systems of cross posts that weren't connected. Okay. Um, how, how important was Ralph Allen to the city of Bath? Well, I think he's very important. Um, <clears throat> first of all, he gets involved with um, the Duke of Beaufort and some other people from Bristol who are right in the um, early part, in the sort of about 1720s, 1730s, um, he gets involved with them and they are involved with the development of Bath. Now he sees that Bath has got this building stone, um, but he uh, manages to get hold of the quarries, he manages to um, organise all the stonemasons. I'm not sure they wanted to be organised, but he organised them. Um, and so he really starts promoting Bath Stone as a building material. Um, he promotes the opening up of the river so that the river can become navigable. And um, so this all starts to hasten this boom in Bath 
and um, the spread of Bath stone as, as a building material outside of um, this place as, as well. So he becomes very influential, um, he gets people like um, Pitt the Elder to come here and to be um, uh, MP for a time until they fall out. Um, but so he's, he's got all these connections, he, he just really, I think without Raphael, and I'm not sure Bath would have had that um, boom in its uh, development that it did so much in the 18th century. Okay, and um, what sort of person was he? Was he kind? Well, um, there's a book by um, Henry Fielding called Tom Jones, and in that is a character called Squire Allworthy. Now, Henry Fielding was a friend of um, Ralph Allen's, and in that you have Squire Allworthy as a very kind sort of gentleman. I think Ralph Allen probably liked that because actually he was a pretty ruthless businessman. And, but he looks very, um, he's not flashy, you know, when you see his portraits, he's very uh, plain clothes, he looks very sort of demure, but he has very shrewd eyes. And the thing with the stonemasons is, is interesting in that they all operated individually. And he says, no, you've got to work for me. And in return, I will build houses. Um, but of course, he was going to pay them less. And when they tried to fight it, then uh, John Wood, who was working for him then, John Wood, the architect, he brings down stonemasons from Yorkshire. And I've actually met somebody who is still a stonemason today. Uh, and his family um, came to Bath about 1740 from Yorkshire and I said to him, hey, you were one of the stonemasons John Wood, or your family, were one of the stonemasons that John Wood brought from Yorkshire and he said, yes, I think so, and they've been stonemasons ever since. So he, if you like, he sort of made them work for him, so that was pretty tough. Um, but he did also say, is he kind? Yes, he gave them um, or supplied them with very nice housing. So there's the houses at the bottom of Prior Park Road, and there's the houses um, up on Coombe Down, as they're called the Rank. Have you seen the Rank? Yes. So he's, uh, I think he, he has, a, has a lot going for him, but I think we should never forget that he was a very, very shrewd businessman. Okay. Um, and last but not least, would you have liked to meet him? Why? Oh, oh, yes, very much so, because um, he knew so much about what was going on, um, with Bath, with the politics, he knew people like the Duke of Beaufort. Um, I don't think he and uh, Bonash liked one another because they were very different people, but I think they respected each other. Um, so he knew all these people, so to talk to him, if you could talk to him, would be, would be wonderful. And also to um, talk to him about people like Alexander Pope, the poet, because uh, he was a friend of his, except that Pope managed to fall out with with him. Um, but uh, it would, yes, I think it would be fascinating that someone, you know, had met all these people that uh, we just read about in history books. Yeah, thanks. Right. This is Shem Castle built by Ralph Allen and it is a fake castle, it is not a real castle. He made this because um, he wanted to look at a castle um, from his bedroom in a nice view um, and he built it two years before he died. Hello again, and here we are at Ralph Allen's grave in Claverton Churchyard near the outskirts of Bath. Ralph Allen died in 1764 
In two years before he died, Cham Castle was built in 1762. Ralph Allen was so famous that a school and a road was named after him. And 250 years later, people of Bath still know his name. Welcome. Oh no. <laughs> I done it wrong. There's no door. <gasps> Hello and welcome to oh, I again. <laughs> Here we are at Ralph Allen's grave in Cleventon Church. Go. Wrap it up.